Well, thank you very Chris, much for coming back. Thank here you very today. much. Good um, to be in the program. This is uh, a couple times back now, mm -hmm. and we've really enjoyed having you here to get a little bit of perspective on what's going on in Washington, a little bit of perspective on some things happening in Northwest Indiana, um, and always a real interesting perspective on um, people that actually are getting along and some yeah. some good news stories that are out there. So. Um, you had a very busy summer. Uh, you're out and about at a lot of events. There's a million parades, there's a million festivals, there's stuff that goes on throughout the country um, that's very similar. What are a couple that really stand out that you think are particularly cool for this region? Uh, I think the ethnic flavor that still permeates Northwest Indiana uh, is one of our great attributes. So you've got pierogi fest, you have a Greek church has a festival in Valparaiso, you've got a Serbian church in Maryville, and multiple Serbian churches that yep. have their summer fest. Uh, and it's a chance just to get people together and to see different cultures. A lot of us eat barbecued lamb, so there's not a lot of differences there. Uh, but I think that's just one of the great attributes that highlights that diversity, but also ability to get along in Northwest Indiana. And it really comes with forward during the summer months. And it's got to give you an opportunity to get out and see people, not necessarily just walking in the parade, but people that want to talk to you and say, hey, listen, I want to bend your ear for 30 seconds or two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it's got to be a good opportunity to engage with those folks. It really is, and there's an ebb and flow. I tell people in some instances Lent is almost my favorite time of year now uh, because everyone has fish fries. Uh, but also you have a lot of people out in the community uh, just trying to make ends meet as far as volunteer fire departments, other groups that are trying to do God's work. I uh, just had a Kiwanis breakfast this morning, and people are doing pancake breakfasts, pork chop fries, spaghetti dinners, chili lunches, and uh, one, I like to eat. Yeah. Uh, two, uh, you really appreciate that these people are just trying to raise money to $5 at a time to do good work in a community, and that's where people go now, too, to socialize. Yep. Uh, and I get my cup of coffee, and it is a chance, as you say, for people to get their hands on me uh, for good or bad. Uh, but in a sense of just to give their opinion, sometimes they've got a problem, they've been thinking about calling you, hey, I'll just talk to you right now. Yeah. Well, you, you pound a lot of pavement during the summer, so yeah. um, my guess is it's, it's um, good healthy for you to get out and talk to everybody. Um, the campaign ahead. Um, you're in the last leg. Um, of a very, very contentious, at least at the presidential level, and in a lot of local and um, state levels, um, of a very contentious campaign. You know, if you turn on the TV, you know, virtually they'll tell you that virtually 100% of the company, uh, country can't stand one of the candidates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're mm -hmm. in a unanimous agreement that at least we've got a 50% chance that we're going to elect someone that's going to ruin the country um, intentionally and take it under, take it um, uh, down. Um, tell me about some people that are getting along. You're a good advocate for um, sides that actually come to agreement. Tell me some things about at a local, regional, um, state or national level of people that are working together mm -hmm. that aren't ready to claw each other's eyes out. Right. Uh, Chris, I'm happy you asked the question because if you do watch national media in particular, uh, because local outlets, uh, people like Belpo, like, they're looking for factual situations. They're also looking for, gee, maybe there are some positive developments going on in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, both gentlemen running for president, I believe, are well-intentioned. Now, we can disagree on almost everything else, but you're right, there's this sense that just it's one is evil incarnate, depending on your particular point of view, and it's just not true. Uh, within the Congress, uh, if you're watching national media, you would think all we do is mud wrestle all day and none of us talk to each other. Uh, I point out to visitors who come for tours that the majority of the votes in the House of Representatives are never recorded votes, they're public votes, but they're all by unanimous consent or general agreement, okay. which means people got along. Uh, I would use... Uh, Not a lot like, of those make the headlines. They don't okay. make the headlines because I didn't punch you out during yep. the course of that particular book because we agreed on something. Uh, so I would caution people that the majority of votes in the Congress do occur in that fashion right off the bat. Secondly, I would reference some of the uh, colleagues I served with on the Appropriations Committee. Uh, my chairman, who was my ranking member, is Rodney Freelingheisen. Republican, state of New Jersey, 
you would be pleased to have him represent you in Congress. Uh, he is a good and decent man. He is a very intelligent guy. He works hard. He wants to leave the world a little bit better. And do we agree all the time? No. But he's not evil. But he's not evil. And we're friends. <laughs> and we sit down Let's think about that. a month before we start putting our bill together, which contains about $30 billion in energy and water project. And he says, what do you want to do? And it's not a gratuitous question, it's, you know, where do we have that general agreement? Now, he has a perspective, I have a perspective. He's chairman, he has a prerogative that I don't, because that's why you try to win elections. He has party pressure, I have party pressure. But you work things out. Uh, we have Bill Young on the Defense Appropriations Committee, on which I serve, uh, as well as my other colleagues. Mr. Freeland Heisen also serves on that subcommittee. If we were having a hearing of that subcommittee and you did not see nameplates and did not know who belonged to which parties, you could not tell in a given hearing who belonged to which party. Yeah. Do we agree all the time? No. We have serious disagreements. They are based on, I think we should do away with this weapons program. We should change how we do acquisition. We need more money for this program. We need to cut that program. Uh, I suggest there's about 150 people in the middle, and I'd include myself in that. Some of my colleagues have suggested maybe I'm a little optimistic, uh, okay. but I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And I say that because there were just over a hundred of us uh, that signed a letter about a year, year and a half ago to the select committee saying, listen, if we're going to solve some of these budgetary problems, you got to put everybody on the table. Now, is that the 218 votes we need to finally move ahead on some of these decisions? No. But what we have been trying to do through lunches, dinners, meetings during the day, well, you know, I know Chris, we haven't talked to him, but, you know, he's not an unreasonable person. Uh, he's good-hearted, wants to solve, maybe we should ask him at one of the meetings, and by accretion, as I call it, try to hit that threshold where we got a center of gravity, whether it's after the election uh, in November and December, more likely at the beginning of next year, because yeah. these problems do have to be addressed. There are a lot of good people out there, and there is that center of gravity. 